Hey everyone, I'm sure like many of you, uh, I've upgraded my SSD from my ASUS ROG Ally. Now, from my ROG Ally, I upgraded from the 512 gigabyte card to the 2 terabyte card. Uh, in doing this, I was able to just basically install whatever the heck I wanted and kind of keep doing my benchmarks, and I was doing it more as a time save than anything else. But now I have this 512 gigabyte SSD laying around not really doing anything. Uh, and I'm sure many of you might have the same kind of thing. Maybe you don't really have a purpose for it yet. So we'll show you a different kind of purpose for this and we'll set it up as an emulator station through the use of LaunchBox. <music> Now, before we get started, you will need at least one thing, but I'm going to recommend a couple of things. Now, thanks to Ugreen for sending this stuff over. Uh, we do have a Ugreen USB-C 7-in-1 hub, uh, the M.2 NVMe SATA SSD enclosure. This is going to be a must. And then we also have a 65-watt uh, 7-in-1 charging station extension cord, and I'll kind of explain why this is a little bit important a little later on. Uh, so getting into the actual 7-in-1 uh, charging station, you can have up to three AC outlets and two USB-C ports and two USB-A ports at the same time. You can charge up to seven devices, uh, up to 65 watts with the USB ports. Now, this is a GAN chip, so it's a smaller kind of block, so it's pretty travel friendly. You can tra uh, charge up your tablet, laptop, anything like that. Uh, you can connect it to a home appliance like your TV, projector, lamp, whatever. Now, getting into the 7-in-1 hub, uh, pretty bog standard, 4K60. Uh, it does 100-watt PD charging pass-through, and it has two USB 3 ports, and it has a micro SD card slot as well as a full-size SD card slot. Uh, again, it's 4K60, so it doesn't do 4K 120, uh, but it will support HDR. Uh, now, it, it is plug and play, like I plugged it into my dad's phone when he was over and it worked uh, instantly. You could transfer files off of it. So these uh, USB uh, sticks, uh, not the actual SSD sticks, but the uh, docking station sticks, they are more useful than the kind of standard dock style I find, because then you can throw them in your bag and use them for your phone, laptop, whatever, as well as your ASUS ROG Ally. Now getting to the NVMe enclosure, this is what I will say is a must for this because otherwise you won't be able to use the SSD. Now this NVMe enclosure does support up to 10 gigabit per second speeds and it is backwards compatible with USB 3.1, 3.0, 2.0 obviously it would be running at slower speeds. Now it's tool free so you don't need a little screw, screwdriver or anything like that. They come with these little rubber nubbins and my tip with these is to kind of line it up with the SSD and then push it into the slot at the same time. That seems to be the most reliable way of getting it in quickly and easily um, and as well it did include a uh, thermal pad now i didn't test this thermal pad because the ssd that i'm actually using is going to be a one terabyte uh, full length ssd but this does support uh, any length of ssd now the 512 gigabyte ssd i put that over my wife's S steam deck and that's what i ended up doing with that one So unfortunately for LaunchBox, you can't just get a straight download link. You have to go to their download page and I'll leave the link there. And then you put in your email and then they send you that download link. So once you have that, then you just run through your install process, uh, go through the accept license agreement if you want. You can. This is where you want to change uh, where you want to set it up. So if you want to set it up on your external hard drive, like I have here, then you can just hit external hard drive and OK. And then next. And then it's just like any other kind of setup for a program, honestly. So we can see here at first launch that it will automatically import any of your games and your game launchers that you do have. Um, so you can hit import games and then choose which games you want to import, but like I said, it'll automatically detect your like PC games. So you can see here that I have games from Steam, uh, and when you click on it, it should tell you where it comes from. So on the top right there, it'll say, yep, that comes from Steam, but I know that Borderlands 3 comes from Epic, so Epic Games is where that one comes from, and so on. So it, it does have the ability to pick up the different stores, um, as well as, uh, actually no, sorry, it doesn't have the ability to pick up the Xbox Game Pass, I don't believe. No, so if you go into tools, import, and then here are your games lists. Oh, sorry, yeah, there's Xbox, Microsoft, Game Store, okay. Or you can manually add your games as well, and then this is where you would just add your title, 
And then conveniently with this, so if you want to add Halo, let's say, you can search for the metadata. Uh, yes, we'll download the game database. And so this is kind of like just the first time stuff. So you won't need to download like the whole game database again every time. Uh, but for right now, that's just what you have to do in the first time setup. And I, I'm not really kind of going through the actual emulator setup process here. I'm just kind of showing you kind of getting to know the program and then we'll get into the actual setting up the emulators. So if you search the local DB or whatever, uh, there we go. So finally it does come through. So Halo Combat Evolved, Halo Combat Evolved. So Microsoft Xbox, uh, again, you can kind of, so Combat Evolved. And there we go. So we can see here, okay, Halo Combat Evolved Windows. And then it's gonna pull everything from there. It's gonna pull a video URL, Wikipedia link and everything. So that's all you need to do for that. And then for the actual launching, you need to go and find the application program path. So if you want to add, um, for instance, uh, one of your Steam games that doesn't show up for some reason. So you would have to go into, or we'll just use Call of Duty as an example because it's right there. So all you'd have to do is just hit your application and then boom, there you go. That's the application that's gonna launch. So it's pretty simple to add in your own games manually, but to do the emulators, that's kind of what this is based around. So managing all your different emulators and your ROMs and setting all that up. So that's what we'll get into next. Now adding in ROMs, there is a couple of different ways. Uh, honestly, the easiest way I've found it is to just kind of do them one at a time. And when I say one at a time, I just mean one system at a time. Uh, you can do like a mass import, but you'll see here that if you do that, then you have to go through a little bit more of a hassle for the first time. So I'm just going to do a split screen view here of LaunchBox and then a split screen view of my hard drive that I have my ROMs on. So if we go into my ROMs folder here, this is on my Battlesera SD card. Um, so I want to import, we'll say my SNES games. So we'll do that first because SNES, uh, it's fine to use through RetroArch. Uh, RetroArch is like the default emulator front end that will run on LaunchBox and get updated through there. But if you want to run things like Dolphin or Yuzu, Ryujinx, you have to add those in manually. Uh, so now if we see here, okay, SNES. So I've got a handful of games in there, uh, 100 and something, I think. Uh, oh, 2000, my goodness, okay. Anyway, so sorry this asus click to whatever so i'm just going to click and drag this folder over here and then it's going to full screen so we can just get rid of that real quick oh my good good okay there we go okay so rom files so what do we want to do it's already automatically detected that we got super nintendo entertainment system so we can go to next and this is where the easy part is so we can automatically install and configure retroarch because it does use the snexx i i can't remember the all of the emulator uh front end and the emulator back end names and everything so i'll leave a nice convenient list uh in the in the description as well as a link to where to find it as and it, that list on reddit credit to the user here um that they have already listed like okay this is going to be your best bet or this will be better for this uh, console or you can use retroarch or if it has a retroarch core for it uh so i'll leave that there because it can be a little bit tough to navigate all the existing emulators so this one here will have a nice convenient list of like nintendo sony systems sega etc so going into the automatically configure, we don't really need to do much. So now because these games are on a different hard drive and I'm not gonna have the SD card connected all the time, I wanna copy the files into my LaunchBox game folder. Um, so you can move them over as well. So that would be like a cut and paste. And then you can either use, use the files in their current location. So if you're already setting it up just straight up on your uh, ROG Ally, not on an external SD card, then you can just use the files in their current location if they're already located on the ROG Ally. But for this purpose, I'm gonna 
to copy the files into my launchbox folder uh, we want to collect all the metadata as well so we can get all those nice pictures and everything um, so now this is where you can pick whatever metadata that you want uh, i'm just going to leave it a default because whatever and then the mu movies i believe that's for the trailers and stuff i've honestly never touched that because i don't care for it so this isn't the guide for that i apologize uh, now here you can have different bezels for the games uh, so this will just kind of like if you want bezels for the 4x3 content or like arcade style games so uh, I mean yeah so whatever I'm going to try theme bezels and then we'll fall back to system bezels because why not it's a cool little thing sometimes to give that retro feel whatever so we'll just hit next on that and then this is where we can just leave this at custom unless you want to allow duplicate games so if you want to allow uh, a Yuzu version and a Ryujinx version of Tears of the Kingdom or something like that um, and then you can also use the folder names instead of the ROM file names but you wouldn't really want to do that uh then you can this one you want to leave checked on though is combine roms with matching titles into a single game so this is for if uh, you have a cd based game that has multiple cds so playstation 1 playstation 2 uh gamecube i believe playstation 2 had a couple of games that were multi-disc uh and yeah honestly i just kind of leave those at default hit next and then here's all my games so the better your uh, labeling system is for your ROMs, the better the detection will be, obviously. It's not going to get everything 100%, but as long as your games are nicely organized, you shouldn't have too much of an issue with it detecting anything. So you can see here it detected 2,200 games or over 2,200 games. So we'll hit finish on that. So now it's downloading and installing RetroArch. And then we will also make this full screen error. There we go, bring that over, bring it full screen. And so yeah, we'll just let this kind of set up and do its thing. Now, the big question, can you add Nintendo Switch games? Uh, yes, but you have to add your own emulator. It doesn't support it through RetroArch or anything like that. So you can either use Yuzu or Ryujinx. So we'll set up Yuzu because that's honestly kind of my preferred uh, Nintendo Switch emulator to use on handhelds. Uh, so we'll just go to Yuzu on their website. You can support them through their Patreon and get their Yuzu early access, but we'll just use the mainline build for this purpose. Uh, as you can see, it was updated uh, two hours ago, and I accidentally downloaded the Linux version. Sorry, we're on Windows today. So going into Windows, uh, we downloaded it. Same thing. You don't need to install it or anything like that. You just need to extract it. So we will extract it with all, and then we will change our location to my hard drive. So we'll go to external hard drive, launch box, and then we will go to emulators. There we go and then we will just extract it here. So extract. And then it'll be the same process to add it through LaunchBox. So if we just want to add the emulator itself without adding a game, like before, uh, we're not gonna click and drag. So we're actually going to go to, <clears throat> sorry, my apologies, manage uh, emulators. And then we're going to go to add and then we'll type in emulator name yuzu application path browse and then go to our emulators folder go into yuzu and then finally yuzu application and then we can save that and then now when we do actually add oh sorry my apologies see so that's the good thing that i actually popped up with that so if you do not do the associated platforms, then it won't let you proceed. So to do an associated platform, we'll need to add in a new one because we will only have what we have already. So we can see that I got the SNES, so we will add Nintendo, and I'm not capitalizing just because, Switch. And that's good. And then we'll, uh, again, because I like using Yuzu as my default emulator, you can check it off as your default emulator for Nintendo Switch games as well. And it'll just automatically select that for you. So you can just hit OK. And then there we go. Now we have Yuzu, RetroArch, and Dolphin set up. So now when we actually go to add our Nintendo Switch games, they'll just add right in. It'll be an easier process to do. And we'll show you how to do that. 
So now we can see here that I have my launch box on the left and my folder on the right full of my ROMs on a different hard drive. So I'm just going to click and drag my switch ROM and then it's going to bring up the ROM files. It's going to ask which system we're trying to do it on. Type in Nintendo. Switch, there we go. Choose an emulator, Yuzu, yep, perfect. And then because it's on a separate hard drive, we're gonna copy the files into my Launchbox game folder. And we're gonna search the game information for the metadata, and then we're gonna download our boxes and whatnot. Skip on the MU movies because it just takes up unwanted space in my opinion, and I don't really care about it. Uh, that will be for a different setup video uh, at some point. And then, yep, we'll just click through the standard next. And then, yep, there we can see that it's Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild that I copied over, not Tears of the Kingdom, my fat fingers, sorry. Uh, and we can see this the XCI extension there. So we'll just hit finish on that. And then we can see that there will be a progress bar here uh, letting us know when our transfer will be complete. Okay, so after the import of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, um, accidentally meant to do Tears of the Kingdom, but whatever. Uh, so we can see here that this is kind of the uh, bane if you have poorly named files that you got from certain places. So what happens is when you import it is it doesn't recognize the name at all, and it won't pull any of the metadata. So you can hit search metadata for this, and it'll say, yeah, no games are found or anything like that. So in order to correct that, to get the metadata, the photos, and all that good stuff, you just go into the title, take out the gibberish, and then that should be okay to just search for metadata. And then there we go, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And there it is. So all you have to do is just hit OK. And then it should just update everything on its own. The metadata you will have to either update that on a new load or you can download and update the metadata for selected games here uh, or you can force update games data metabase uh, but so we'll just hit update here from the metadata yep yep next uh, download and replace sure oops finish and then that should pull all of the relevant info successfully updated the metadata and there we go we can see that it pulled in the background and everything like that uh, you can put custom backgrounds as well obviously um, well not obviously sorry that's not uh, fair to say um, so if you want to go into edit metadata again you can go here and then go to images and then this is where you can add in your own images um, this is all of the images that it had downloaded um, but yeah, so that's kind of where you can set that up. So for my testing and like, honestly, my personal preference is I'll use Yuzu for Nintendo Switch. I will use Dolphin for GameCube and Wii games. I'll use Simu, uh, C-E-M-U for my Wii U games, uh, Citra for 3DS. And then honestly, for what I, what else I play like Nintendo or, uh, Super Nintendo NES, Honestly, that's kind of all I really play console wise and a bit of N64. I'm okay with running RetroArch and just letting it do its own thing for that. So we'll see like the difference of kind of running RetroArch versus uh, running a Nintendo Switch emulator through Yuzu or something. So we'll pick, uh, I don't know, we'll pick whatever game. I want an okay game, but I don't know. Um, so you'll see that. Oh my goodness. Okay, Alien 3. Sure, why not? So depending on the ROMs that you get, you might get uh, mismatched box art. That's something that you'll just kind of come across with any of these things anyway. Uh, so that's something that you can kind of tune up on your own and fix. So we can see here that because this is a RetroArch game, it will just pick up the thing and it's got the uh, downloaded bezels on the side there and everything, which is nice. And it should should pick up the Xbox controller uh, or the Asus controller. So it, it did say that it mapped it, so it should recognize it as once we get into the game here. It seems like start does work there. Did seem like I skipped something there. Start, yep, okay, perfect. So the RetroArch, we already have it all mapped in. Oh, turn down the volume a bit there. 
So retro arch, yeah, it's already mapped in. We're good to go. D-pad works. A button is jump. Uh, X is shoot my flamethrower. Y is grenade. B is uh, machine gun. Uh, it's been a while since I, I have played this game, but it's been a long time since I played it. Um, but yeah, so this is kind of what you can expect for just doing like the automatic retro arch setup. It, it's pretty seamless in what you can do do though like it, it there might be some games uh that might get better performance in tweaking certain settings and we'll kind of show how to do that as well all right so once you're actually in retroarch and loaded into a game some helpful things to know uh that you might want to set hotkeys for so your f1 key is your quick menu or your kind of quick access menu for retroarch so there is controller binding so you can completely control this with controller bindings uh with the rog controller just note that you will have to switch over to gamepad mode if you launch it in a desktop environment uh so now you can access your save states your load states undo load states uh, you can replay uh record rewind you can change your control options as well there's turbo functions you can change the controller ports uh you can record you can do all sorts of things and this is just the quick access menu so if you back out even further there's a further settings menu here that will take you in through uh settings for drivers so the default for this is the open gl or gl drivers uh typically more so in 3d based games vulcan will offer better performance so if you're getting bad performance don't be afraid to come in here check it out and change over to vulcan always worth a shot especially on amd it does seem to favor it obviously it is amd based so <laughs> it is built to favor it uh, so now going into video output settings, you can go to output and you can change your video uh, thing from there as well. You can change your resolution from here as well. So this is your just hard coded resolution from what you can do though. Um, and then, yeah, you can set the refresh rate and all that good stuff in there. Uh, full screen mode, you can change full screen settings, height and all that. Same with windowed mode. Scaling, you can change your integer scaling from here. Uh, if you want to do that, that oops integer scaling it will scale down the there you can kind of see it here um so if you go to yeah honestly synchronization this is all your v-sync stuff adaptive sync uh g-sync all that good stuff in here and then so you will be able to do that with the adaptive sync or uh free sync so there's bilinear filtering if you want to add a bit of a blur to soften the hard pixel edges uh it depends on what kind of look you're going for. Typically, I leave all that stuff kind of disabled. Uh, video filter, you can get your custom filters here. You can get like dot matrix, CRT, things like that. Game Boy filters, if you're into that sort of stuff. I honestly never have been, but it's a personal preference, honestly. Again, you can change your input controls here. You can change more uh, settings from here, honestly. You can change your dead zones and your sensitivities, all that good stuff in there. And then as well as those uh, controller ports. You can change your core settings so you can manage all your cores from here. So you can see which cores are supplied through RetroArch. So you can see Arcade, all that. Let's get down to, sorry if this makes you ill for motion blur i apologize so we can see here the nintendo 3ds it does have citra so honestly you want you could just use retroarch and use nintendo 3ds for that if you wanted uh, and then they have melon os which is another good ds emulator uh so yeah and honestly like game boy i'm fine with just using retroarch as the front end and letting it do its own thing same with snes and all that good stuff so that's kind of what you have up to you don't have gamecube obviously uh, there is N64 as well. Uh, the, yeah, sorry, there we go. Mupin, Mupin 64 Plus is the one that I always use. Uh, I don't have much experience with the parallel N64, to be quite honest with you. So, oh, sorry. Yeah, and we do, oh, this is, yes, no, sorry. They do have a Dolphin emulator built into it now. I forgot about that. Yes, they do have the Dolphin Core emulator built in. So when you're loading it in, honestly, you can give it a try to give it a try and let me know if you're just going to use the regular RetroArch front end for Dolphin uh, in LaunchBox, let me know. Or if you're the type of person to set it up personally and tweak it yourself. Uh, honestly, I'm more so kind of the person to set it up and tweak it myself. Same with like the Yuzu settings and all those, uh, especially for the heavier duty emulation. I'm preferred much to tweak it myself because there's uh the settings have more implications performance wise i'd say 
And then we can see back here, we can go back to our favorites. So you wouldn't really want to set up the favorites through the RetroArch because you're not using RetroArch really as the front end. It's weird that you're using a front end for a front end, but that's kind of what you're doing. So you would set up all your favorites through LaunchBox and then launch them through there. And then they would launch through RetroArch or your Dolphin emulator, CMU, uh, or Yuzu, whatever you're going to use. Now, yeah, so you can get more, or these are all the licenses and everything like that. Uh, you can import content, but honestly, I, I would just stop at the main settings and the settings here. These, these would be the two menus that I would kind of dabble in, and that would be really it. Unless you want to play the online net play stuff or do whatever with that, I'm not too familiar with that, so by all means. Now, I've launched up Diddy Kong Racing running the N64 through RetroArch here. Now, because this is an N64 game, control can kind of be wonky depending on the game and how you have your controls set up. So if you hit your F1 key again on the keyboard or if you map it to a hotkey on your RG Ally through the Asus Armory Crate software, you can go into your quick access menu and then go to controls and you can go to port one controls and then device type. You can see, yep, controller. And then this is where you can change each individual control and what you want it to be set to. So our C1 button is B, our C3 is A, our C4 is uh, X and our C2 is uh, Y. So this is actually set up for the uh, Nintendo Switch style or Japanese style. So that might also come into play here with some confusion. So with that being said is you're basically going to have to play each game, see what the controls set to, and then just kind of memorize which buttons do what and then map it from there, unfortunately. But for the most part, the games will kind of be mapped out fairly well on their own, in my experience. Uh, I've been able to play like Super Mario 64 and other games like that, no problem. Now, another hotkey you're going to want to also bind potentially is the full screen or F11 key, especially for the Nintendo Switch emulation like Yuzu and Ryujinx. Uh, that will allow you to full screen and minimize it. And so when we're actually in here, this is where we can get to our Yuzu uh, emulation controls. So this should do a fairly decent job about configuring and making sure that the controls bind properly, but we can always double check in here. So we can see that the input device is actually set to keyboard and mouse. So I'm not playing on a keyboard and mouse. I do have a wireless one connected, but that would mean that our controller wouldn't work. So we would need to go into our input device and change it from keyboard and mouse or keyboard only or whatever to Xbox 360. And then boom, we can see that's all set there. If you want to set up motion controls, you can do that through the use of handheld companion. And I've done that in a previous video. Uh, it's honestly a pretty simple just install and play application and then if you just want to add motion controls you can turn it on and off as needed for when you're playing yuzu or simu content uh, through wii u or nintendo switch now we can see here that uh, this rom actually did come pre-installed with some uh, updates and everything uh, because I got this through a previous channel sponsor, uh, Jay Matchin. Uh, if you're not familiar or comfortable at all with like, getting ROMs and stuff, this can be a kind of gray area of getting them. Uh, so I'll just leave the link below if you want to get them that way. Uh, just note that any and all like proceeds that I got from that did go to a dog rescue that I work with locally. Uh, so I'm not like gaining anything off of that anyway, and I'm not going to leave an affiliate link below this for that either. It's just another option. Uh, I wouldn't recommend recommend it for uh, current games obviously because that's just straight up pirating and stealing but this was sent to me like this so I mean here you go this is a way to get it I guess uh, all pre-set up and ready to go but as you can see here that if you go into emulation and then go into configure current game this is where all of your updates and your mods would be for Yuzu so what I recommend doing is going and setting up a folder for all of your updates and your DLC and everything so I know uh, more so for like Nintendo Switch, uh, Nintendo Wii, Nintendo Wii U that had like the installable content and stuff. Uh, I know there is other consoles that will benefit from it as well. But what I would do with that is either you can set it up kind of two of which ways. You can set all of your games and have your games and their DLC all in one folder and then go from there. 
or you can go and have a separate folder entirely, which is what I would kind of recommend. So I would do it in the main folder here. And so you can see here that these are updates for LaunchBox itself. So what I would put for a new folder is a DLC and actually no. DLC and updates. So what you can do with that is then channel all of the DLC and updates through there or copy them because you will, for some instances, like for some emulators, you'll have to copy them right into the actual emulator folder. But if you want to copy them all over and then just have like, okay, here's my Nintendo Switch DLCs, here's my GameCube DLCs, here's my uh, Nintendo Wii DLCs, whatever, uh, and then have them all formatted and posted there separately from your ROMs, then it gets a little bit easier to deal with. And as well, you can kind of put your like cheats, fixes, and uh, hacks in here as well so it just kind of keeps it like neat and separate from everything else so you're not cluttering up your games folder with everything uh, doing it that way so we can see here for yuzu if you want to do like your actual just kind of tinkering and everything so you can go to the emulation and configure and do all of your configurations through here uh, so this is where you again you can set up your controls the graphical options uh, so honestly, my recommendation for like just kind of a global uh, Yuzu settings is what's listed here. Use the Vulcan pipeline cache, async shader building, uh, reactive flushing, decode ATC can help sometimes, uh, but it not it doesn't help every time. So Tears of the Kingdom, it does help. Uh, but I do recall in Kirby, I believe it did not help. Uh, enable async presentation should usually be on as well all the time. Uh, maximum of clocks, that should be off if you're using any sort of FPS hack, like a 60 FPS hack in Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, audio controls, there's not really too much in here. You can just kind of change where it puts out in the output mode. Uh, and then yeah, here's your system settings, nothing too crazy there. Now accessing and backing up your save files for Yuzu specifically, uh, you can right click on it and go into properties or go into save data location or mod data location. So I'll show you both there. So we'll see here for Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom that if we go into properties, uh, this will bring us into the same menu, but here is where we can trigger these uh, mods. I don't know what they say, so your guess is as good as mine. Um, but you can go into your save data location, so this would be like your slot 01, slot 02. Uh, those are the ones that you're going to want to back up. Now, you can see here like footprint, progress, save. They're going to look a little bit different for each game depending, but that's what they look like for Legend of Zelda. Now, if you want to open up your mods data location, same thing, just right click, open mod data location, and this is where you can place all your mods and hacks for uh, Yuzu. All right, so another point to bring up is if you have multiple emulators, so if you have the RetroArch and Dolphin installed, for example, you can long press or right click on the game that you want to open and then or the emulator that you want to open and then you can hit say open dolphin from here and then this is how you can just open straight up dolphin on its own and then this is where you would control any configurations so your graphics options your enhancements so you can see here that i have set to 1440p uh, i changed that myself hacks you can have uh force like widescreen hacks and things like that um, and then, yeah, so that's how you get into the controls through here, uh, and then do all of your settings through that. If you want to change your controller type and do all your controller settings, you can have Wii remotes and, uh, all the like in there. And then just kind of wrapping things up, there's just a few other helpful things. So if you want to scan for any more ROMs, uh, scan, if you want to add for achievements and things like that. Uh, you can clean up your media for all your platforms. This will kind of take out like the duplicates and take out all the like numbers and letters and stuff. You can export this to an Android play uh, layout as well. So they have the Android app, which I've honestly not checked out in quite a long time. But you can create a data backup as well. And you can also consolidate your ROMs and everything. So if you want to create a data backup, you can just go in there. And then it'll create a 7-zip of your backup of everything. Um, so it'll be your all of that. And yeah, so it's just an easy kind of lightweight way to kind of control everything and have everything on the go. So that kind of leads me into my next point of like the purpose of this and like the package of getting the HDMI 
cable or the HDMI dock, the M.2 drive, and then as well, the power brick. So for this, for me, it's kind of like a portable like emulation station, right? So if you want to bring it over to a buddy's house, maybe they have an ally, maybe they have a PC or something hooked up. Uh, these accessories are all just easy to kind of throw into a bag. Like you can throw the dock and the M.2 drive in your pockets, honestly. The charging brick, you could easily just carry that around or just throw it in your bag if you have one or seat your car whatever uh not too bulky uh, i wouldn't fit in any sort of case that i have but if you have like a larger kind of laptop bag or something but anyway so having all of those you can bring that over to your buddy's house and say hey let's play some retro games hey and then with my uh game sir t4 mini controller this isn't sponsored but i just bought this on my own because i am taking a trip soon so i just wanted a nice small controller so this would be perfect for playing like multiplayer games gamecube nintendo switch whatever uh and then hopefully if they have some other controllers as well maybe xbox controllers ps4 like if they're a console player then you can pair those up no problem through bluetooth and then to do that you would honestly just go into your controller setting for launch box and then all you have to do is just enable all controllers so if you go into your settings for that we go into tools and then go to options and then we have to scroll all the way down to the bottom on the left hand side here and then we see sorry all the way down game controllers there we go so you would just do use all attached controllers so you can see here that i only have one xbox controller attached right now but you check that off and then that's how you can play like the multiplayer games with multiple controller inputs if you're having issues in certain games try turning it off but that's how you try it. that's how you can do that so I figured I'll just end this video off with me playing a little bit of uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, but this, you'll notice that we're not actually getting any of those black artifacting lines. So that's because I'm running the latest 780M drivers on the ASUS ROG Ally. So now this is a process that you can do to force install the 780M drivers provided by AMD as opposed to the drivers provided by ASUS. Uh, it comes with its own advantages and disadvantages, but obviously the advantage being that, yes, now the graphics are fixed in Tears of the Kingdom. There's no more of those black artifacting lines running along the ground. Now, I'm sure there probably are other graphical glitches or bugs or something related to Yuzu or whatever just being an emulated Switch game. The, those may come, but you can see here that me running the... Uh, the <laughs> mount doom run as i always called it in my tears of the kingdom optimization videos uh, i will be making a new one very soon now that these drivers are out and now that there has been meaningful performance gains so i'll be doing a big deep dive on that if you are interested uh, i suggest subscribe to the channel until i put that out and then feel free to unsubscribe afterwards once you get the content out of me that you want no hard feelings taken no offense but we can see here that we are getting, even though this is a brand new run, I've not played this at all on this uh, version of my ally uh, now that I've like fresh installed it. So there's been no shaders build or anything. So this is a fresh run on my save of the Mount Doom run. And we can see here that we are getting like pretty steadily-ish above 20. Uh, obviously, the more you play, the more it will smooth out. But you can see here that, yes, the graphics are pretty darn good now. Uh, there's no more artifacting that you would normally get along the textures on the ground now keep in mind this is not optimized whatsoever this is not running the latest yuzu version this is not running the latest even game update version or anything like that i'm just running in not even technically probably compatible game save because this is my game save from the latest game version running on game version 1.1 so there might be some performance implications or weirdness from there alone but as you can see yep tears of the kingdom we're doing pretty good on 780m drivers so i just wanted to give you guys a little sneak peek on that uh, beyond that there's not really too much else to say about launchbox and the setup uh, let me know how you want or how you have been setting up a uh, launch box i know you can do it through like an internet or internet uh provider as well uh I, I know you can do it through like a local kind of LAN server setup i think you can probably extend that to be like a global online access wherever setup uh obviously that would depend on like your internet connection speeds and things like that but yeah you can definitely set this up as like a kind of LAN gaming center or in the case of this yeah you just have a perfect on the go little m.2 drive with all your roms your games and then you can bring it over to your buddy's house play some double dash play some super mario brothers do whatever right like it'd be like the multiplayer king of the party at that point <laughs>
And yeah, that'll sort of wrap up this super lengthy video. So again, huge shout out to you, Green. If you want to find any other products, feel free to find them in the description below. Uh, as well, find any of the LaunchBox uh, websites and things like that and the Reddit links and all the relevant information there. Uh, so as always, thank you for watching. Uh, I know this isn't going to be the most like complete tutorial. It's not going to have every little intricate detail, but at least it hopefully hits the main points of adding in like your generic kind of SNES games that are okay to run off the retro front end, uh, retro art front end, sorry. And then adding in more uh, of an intricate emulator like Yuzu or Dolphin or something like that and having to manually add in your games and manually add in that emulator and set it up that way. So hopefully, I at least kind of covered a broad enough uh, spectrum, I guess, on Launchbox just to at least get you through and kind of at least get you starting to tinker on your own, explore some of the options more below. Uh, obviously, there's things like image upscaling that you can get into, uh, but that would be dependent on each emulator that you use. I kind of showed that in the Dolphin emulator there. Uh, but again, uh, to wrap up this super, super lengthy video at this point, uh, it's over 40 bloody minutes long, so I do apologize for that. I'll just give a shout out to my members, Roy Watney or Roy Wayne, I believe it is, Darkstar, Omoa, Rika1217, and Joey VR. As always, you guys are amazing for subscribing and joining as a member, uh, so I really, truly do appreciate that. Uh, as well, I always appreciate people interacting with the video, even just watching the video, even if they don't leave a like, even if they leave a dislike, that's great too. Honestly, go ahead, I don't really care. Uh, dislike it down into oblivion, that's fine by me. Uh, but as always, I hope everyone has a great day.